Hey there, welcome back. Today I'm going to be covering a new laser operator in uh, cam mode in Kirimoto. It allows you to mix uh, CNC milling and laser operations together and produce parts like that. So this is pretty simple. Um, if in your device mode you enable laser, checking that there, then you will get two new operators here, laser on and off, that you can add to your timeline. And anything that goes in between those is going to be enabled as a laser operation. Pretty simple. You have control over the scripts here and a few uh, options which I'm going to cover here for this. For right now, if I just slice this, this is a pretty typical outline step down of a millimeter. Produces something like this in preview mode. Now there are a couple of different things. You're going to see the laser power here and this is the, the head uh, move speed here. So you can toggle between what you're looking at. And so this is just at, I think, whatever power setting we have here, power one. If I change it to 0.5 and then preview that, you'll see that the color matches sort of the halfway point here. There's another interesting thing that you can do with this. Instead of using a fixed power, you can use adaptive power, which uh, is gonna match it to the Z height on the model. So we're gonna go from like zero to one. And these two things, because they're set at zero, are essentially gonna use the lowest and the highest power settings. So if I preview that, you will see that the power is going to be a gradient from the lowest power at the bottom to the highest power at the top of the part here. And the other thing we can do here is, uh, since this is actually a contour path following the part, if you wanted to turn this into a flat pattern, you can turn on flatten, and that will then flatten the pattern to the top, and that will be the Z of whatever your either stock or model is, and then you can just laser that as a regular pattern with the gradient power. And there's one other thing that's sort of interesting here is that the adaptive uh, range can be capped, uh, to be something which is not the full height of the part. And when I do that, it's going to cut it off like that. And then there's another option, which is repeating. And that turns it into a modulus of this. And so you can have essentially for like topographical maps and things like that. You can have these sort of gradient power lines, which are kind of interesting. And is there one more thing here? Yeah, you can reverse the power order. So the highest power can be actually the lowest power and the lowest can be the highest. And when you do that, the gradient lines are inverted. So to turn this into a real job, we're gonna to wanna to actually mill something first. So that would be the path that the laser is gonna follow. Let's turn the stock on for this part so that we can do some more interesting milling operations. The first thing that I would do for a part like this is just a rough, roughing operation. Put that at the beginning, use a small end mill, and let's see, Step down, these look normal. Let's just uh, disable these for now and slice it and see what the roughing operation looks like. And we can also preview that with an animation just to make sure that we're on the right path with this. Which you know, looks okay as a starting point. We're gonna wanna make this a little bit smoother so before we laser mark it. So we can uh, add a more traditional contouring operation Let's stick with the same tool and setting curves only on this will allow us to disable the rough for a second so that we can see what this looks like. Will allow us to only get the parts that, is, that are going up and down or at least around contours. We'll also wanna add a Y contour to that. Which is gonna smooth this part nicely for us. So let's just put it all together and animate that. That looks a lot better. And I think we are ready to laser mark that. We'll put it all together and see what the preview looks like. Here we can turn on and off the milling operations independent of the laser. So we can hide that and show that. And then we're ready to run the job. And as we showed at the beginning of the video, what that ends up looking like There's some other interesting things we can do as well. Instead of just doing this as a simple outline or waterline, we can add a pocketing operation, which will give us a little bit more of an interesting path. Let's try that for a second and see what that looks like. And here you'll see that the path offset is a little bit different. Um, it's not just a strictly uh, waterline path. It goes up and down on the part. We can try a different part of this as well.
And that's an interesting path. And we can combine that into a part. Let me see if I can find a picture of that for you. And it would look like that when we flatten it out. When you combine these options with some of the other laser operations, repeating adaptive power, you get some pretty interesting options. You could uh, etch and offset just lettering, for example. It doesn't have to be contour and topo maps. There are other ways of marking a part with lasers now, but it does follow the 3D path, which I think is probably the key thing here that's a differentiator for how to use this and the fact that it can be combined with CNC operations. I hope you found this useful and I look forward to your feedback. I also hope to see you on the forums or in Discord.